हेलो 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 हाई गाइज गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम बैक टू न्यू वीडियो इन दिस वी गोन सी अ प्रॉब्लम स्पेशल आर ए वन एंड स्पेशल आर ए टू नाउ एनी कंसेप्ट विच एवर आई टेक द नेम ऑफ इन एनी वीडियो इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड इट देन सिंपली राइट दैट कंसेप्ट नेम फॉर एग्जाम्पल प्रफेक्ट सम्स बाय आर एन मित्तल यू विल फॉर श्योर गेट टू वीडियो एट द टॉप जस्ट वॉच दो टू वीडियो विल गेट द प्रॉपर इंट्यूशन ट्रिक्स एवरीथिंग रिलेटेड टू दैट कंसेप्ट I'm saying for future. Let's come back to this problem. So again, okay, let's go on to special array one. It's a very simple, very basic, very easy one. It simply says that we are given an array, um, an array considered special. If every pair of adjacent elements it contain two numbers of different parity. So if I have let's say nums, I have to compare the adjacent elements and I have to make sure that they have different parity. What the mean by parity is? Parity is okay odd. Then it should be even, or if it is even, then the next should be odd. This is called as parity. How we figure out the parity of a number? For example, if I have a num, let's say num is twelve. How we figure out the parity? We just simply mod that number by two. If I have a number, let's say twelve, I will mod it by two. If I get a zero, it is even because I am doing a mod by two. If the number would have been odd, I will get a one. So by this, I can figure out what is the parity of a number by simply doing a mod by two. If it comes out to be zero, which means it is even. If it comes out to be two, if it is sorry, if it comes out to be one, it is odd. And I just want that for the consecutive elements, their parity should be different. It can be even odd or odd even, anything, but it should be different. If it is following for the entire num array, I am good. I, what I'll do? I'll simply start from my i equal to one. I'll compare with i minus one. Simply check the parity. One and two. Okay, both are different. Okay, go on. Check four and one. Both are different. Go on. Oh, ultimately I have reached the end. If I have reached the end, which means I was satisfying all my parities or my consecutive parities, and I am good to go. So I'll simply return a true. Ultimately, in the end, I will re return a true. Let's take this example. Four and three parities different. Okay, one and three parities same. Re re ultimately, like. Now, now, now only return a false. So I will simply return a false. So you can simply see I will simply iterate on my entire array nums. I will simply compare my nums of i compared with nums of i minus one. And when, and when I say compare, I will compare their parity, which means mod by two. If they become same, simply return a false. Even if trying for all of these nums, all of the numbers, I am still not able to. Return a false, which means it was true. Return a true, and that is my answer. So the code is pretty simple. I went from index equal to one to index is less than n i plus plus. I compared the parity. If it becomes equal, I have to return a false. Else, I will simply return a true. Now, for the second case, still they have the same condition of special that if the adjacent elements contains the two numbers with different parity. For all the entire nums, then it is called as a special array. But now, instead of giving you the entire array, they have given you a query. Now, query says query if from to two, which means if my nums was let's say this big, if my nums of array was this big, now I will give you a query. Query will be from to two, which means you have to consider only this specific portion to tell me if this is special or not. If this is special or not. So, in the very naive case, what you might end up doing is you will say, "Arin, for every query, I will apply the first formula, and I will go and iterate on this entire subarray because you can simply see it's a subarray. I iterate on this entire subarray, and then I can simply find out that if it is special or not. If it is special or not. So, what's the complexity for that? For every query." You will go and find again. This query is a query length, and you can easily see the query can be anything. L to R can be anything. L to R can be entire length also. So the subarray can be entire array also. So for every query, you are roughly iterating on the entire array. Array length is one e five. So if you repeat the first thing for every query, it will be for every query. I will repeat the first thing, which is the first method which I saw. It will be one e ten. Which will TLE. So okay, I cannot do this. I have to do something else. And I can easily see from my answer also that for every query, I can either again for every query I should either get the answer in O of one or in O of log n. That's it. 
so this is what i want to do now this is for sure not feasible for any query i can never get the answer in o of one or o of log n until unless i pre-compute something from my main array so the constraints itself are speaking louder and saying that do some pre-computation here again you saw how i found out that i need to actually pre-compute something my constraints are saying that Aryan, do some pre-computation here after doing the pre-computation you will either be able to find out the answer in maybe o of one or o of log n and that would work for every query okay now coming on back if i look at the example and if you are just uh, like say okay Aryan, um why why like what what is can you just give the example okay for you the quick example is they are saying zero to four zero one two three and four so this is the entire array you can easily see that two and six have the same parity they should not be adjacent but they are so return a false now okay for zero to two zero one two three zero two this is the array three and one same parity false two to three two to three two two three one six different parity so, uh, so you will confuse, okay, Aaron. Um, it seems good, but you said to pre-compute something. So as to get the answer, what I should pre-compute? It is a bit unclear, bro. Simple. What is the worry for you? Your worry is the indexes. Your worry is the indexes which are harming you. The indexes which are harming you. It is your worry. So what you will do? Okay, you will say, okay, Aaron, uh, three and four. Awesome, awesome. They are good, good, good. One and three. Ah, they are same. So it is a worry for me. It is a bad index. So okay, I can put one. I can put only one index. So let's say I put two as a bad index. Now this two says that I am a bad index, but with my previous one. But with my previous one. Remember, you have taken only one index. This index two is not the bad with. It is he is not bad with six. He is bad with three. So this index 2 is not bad with index 3. Uh -huh. He is bad with his previous index. So make sure that you again, you can solve it anyways. You can also keep track of the bad index as 1. But in my case, let's say I have taken the bad index as 2. But I should remember in my mind that previous index is the bad. Like previous combination, which means the previous one is the bad one with me. Okay, awesome. So I have stored 2 only in my bad indexes. Now, it is roughly again if if you know one thing you have to simply do a pre-computation of something of something you have to do pre-computation of something for you you have to find out again in the range of 0 to 2 you have to find out the count of bad indexes and simply if the count is more than equal to 1 if any of the bad index is, the, is in this range I will simply say that bro this range again when i say the count will be more than equal to one which means okay as you can simply see two will lie inside this if two will lie inside this i, I can simply say na, that i have the count of bad index as one and ultimately for your simplicity i can simply write one and two so both one and two lie inside this range so ultimately you can easily say okay rn in this range i will find the count of bad indexes if this is more than equal to one which means this query is bad which means the answer for this query will be false. But you will have a next doubt, Aryan. But I can also see that for this range 2 to 3, again this 2 is lying inside. Okay, okay. That will depend how you are trying to see what is lying inside or not. But still, what you want here, you want the count of bad indexes in this range. Because you can have any range, L to R. You just want the count of bad indexes in this range. Do you remember something if you want to find the count or summation of a range? Right? If I ask you, if I ask you, um, if I ask you that, okay, let's say the range is uh, 2 to 8. And if I gave you the bad indexes as, um, bad indexes are, let's say, um, take anything, uh, 4, 6, and 7. Now I'm asking you, give me the count of bad indexes in this range 8 to 2. You will simply say, are in the count is 3. What you did? You took the range as from 2 to 8. You would have marked that Rn 
I will have at four. Okay, I have one by index. At six, I have one by index. I have at seven, I have one. And then I am taking kind of a range sum. Range sum. If you want to find the range sum, simply you take prefix sums to find the range sum. Again, if you don't know what uh, what the prefix sum is, as, as I told you, just write prefix sums by RM. Tell you get the video now. So we realize, okay, we can actually use the prefix sum approach to count the number of bad indexes in a range. So what I did was, okay, I grabbed this 4316. I put the indexes, whatsoever I have. And then I will simply, again, as I can simply see also that, okay, this is a good index. This is a bad index. So one for him. This is a good index, but okay, zero for him. So this is representing the bad indexes but i want the bad indexes prefix sum prefix sum so i'll take prefix sum as 0 0 1 and 1 this is showing the prefix sum now in the general prefix sum whenever you take the range l to r what you do you take prefix sum of r minus prefix sum of l minus 1 this is just to take range l to r in consideration just to take range l to r in consideration but i told you that my L, my L will be bad if it is actually having my L minus 1 also. If it is having my L minus 1 also, only then he is bad. So, if I take 1 minus 0, I will give for this L to R, for, the, for this L to R, I will give the answer or the count as 1. And you also see, the count is 1. But this count is 1, considering, considering he would come with my previous number, which was this number 3. Right. So I realized this prefix sum is a bit different. Is a bit different. What I will do? I will instead take the count from R to L plus 1. It will be L plus 1 to R. I want the count in this range. L plus 1 to R. So again, if L plus 1 is 1, then it, he will make sure that I also am making a pair with the previous one and L ultimately will lie in my range because I want to query for L to R. Right. So in my prefix sum, I will ask from L plus 1 to R. Why L plus 1? Because I know that if this L plus 1 is 1, this means he is 1 with, because he is making adjacent pair with the previous one, which is L. And thus, I will cover L to R. So, I realized, okay, I have to find L plus 1 to R. Thus, I will do, I will do prefix sum of R minus prefix sum of L. So, the change is, I will do a prefix sum of R minus prefix sum of L. So I will do a prefix sum of R minus prefix sum of sorry prefix sum of R minus prefix sum of L to find the count in the range L to R and that is the only difference or the only beautiful thing in this problem that it is a bit different than the normal prefix sum because here you are doing prefix sum of R minus prefix sum of L cool and you realized why because of this fact now if I just walk you through the existing example what will happen zero to so you will do a prefix sum of 2 minus prefix sum of 0. Prefix sum of 2 minus prefix sum of 0. Count is 1. Count is 1. And you can see whenever the count is more than equal to 1, I know it is a, I know the count of bad indexes in this range is more than equal to 1. So this is a bad range for me. So the answer for this range is false. False. Same way for 2 to 3, I will do a prefix sum of, my prefix sum of 3 minus my prefix sum of 2. The count is the count is zero. Count is zero, which means the number of bad indexes in the range two to three are actually zero, which means it's a good range. It's a good range. Answer is two. Let's see the code. It's pretty simple. Firstly, I'll take the prefix sum. I maintain the prefix sum, and I go on to all the indexes. I just maintain if okay, if it's a bad index, which means I maintain my i as my bad index, considering he is having the same parity as that of i minus one. Okay, I maintain the prefix sum here. Then I go on to all the queries and I said, okay, because you know, if my if I only have one element, then for sure there is uh, nothing. So you can simply re return my answer from here itself. Everything is a true. Everything is good. One element, there will be no repetition. There will be no uh, adjacent comparing. There will be nothing. So simply have a true here itself. Although um, you could have got this answer, but still you can just simply return this answer from here itself. Now go on to all the queries. For every query, go and get the range L to R. I have shown as U, U comma V. I know the count will be prefix sum of V minus prefix sum of U. I got the count. 
you know why it is not u minus 1, right? Now, if the count is more than equal to 1, answer is false, else it is true. Else it is true, nothing. So, answer will be, answer 5 will be for every query, I am actually finding my answer in O of 1 time because of the pre-computation which I have done here itself. Cool. Now, the complexity, as you can simply see, here I am going on to all the elements. Time is O of n, space is also O of n. Now, I am using the above pre-computation of prefix sums to find my answer. So, it will be O of Q time here itself. No time extra used to find the answer for every query. So, time use will be O of n plus Q. Space used will be O of n. And that is your answer. Cool. I hope you guys got it. Again, if you were not able to solve it or if you were actually having a bad rank, make sure to watch, to watch this video in which we have specifically told that, okay, things are not as good as it feels like people do cheat cool bye bye take care with proof and again you can if you want you can just subscribe this this is a new channel in which we bring in crash courses and again some awesome videos for your life dsa and other stuff you can just go and check out bye bye take care